Hello, testing. <clears throat> Hello, testing. One, two, three. Let me know how the signal is here. Testing, testing. One, two, three. See where everybody's at. Hey, Matt, King Jordan, good test, good audio. Good, loud and clear. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, okay, I don't see it on my end yet. All right, great. All right, we're up and running. Hey, um, want to run through real quick this morning, um, this eclipse. I'm here in Northern California. I won't get to see much of the eclipse here in Northern California, but um, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff online. And the coolest thing right now is this. Can you see this? The, ah, boy, I need, a, I need another screen here. The WB-57 jets are launching the NASA jets. Uh, boy, how am I going to do this? So I'm going to just do a short update now, and then we'll come back to this. I'll shut this down and come back to this later on today. Um, so the WB-57 research, high-altitude research jets are departing uh, Houston right now. Where's my staff when I need them? Where is my videos and live? In order to go research the eclipse this morning. They're going to be researching the corona. They've got special cameras on board, infrared cameras, uh, to get some good images of the corona of, of the sun during this eclipse today. Okay, let's see now. Did, were, you, were you guys able to see that okay? The, the screen? Yeah, okay, it's working. Got it. All right. How am I going to pull this over to the side? So let's see what altitude they're at right now. They're, they say they're going to go up to about 50,000 feet to get above the atmosphere's water vapor level. And they're going to fly along with the eclipse. But this time this year, as opposed to 2017, they're going to fly side by side rather than in tandem. So in 2017, they took these two WB-57 research jets and... Um, flew them in tandem in order to uh, increase the amount of, of totality of the eclipse time to take pictures. This time, they're going to fly uh, in, in um, tandem in order to get data from the same place at the same time and compare the data. And uh, they are going to, in an effort, get um, infrared camera data of the corona of the sun in order to further study the mysterious corona of the sun and answer a bunch of basic questions like why uh, why is the corona so much hotter than the surface of the sun and um how do how is it that some parts of the corona are so bright how is it the parts of the sun are <laughs> equivalent brightness but incredibly different temperatures and how what's the source of the solar wind um the the solar wind is deep down in the beginning of the corona which you can only see during a total eclipse now who are these jets over here oh we got some air force we got some we got a three ship of air force jets flying over there randy one four three one three so the eclipse is going to be starting here in a couple hours uh let's go over to here to zoom earth this is what i really want to i'm really interested to see tracking live will we should be able to see the shadow of the eclipse let me get me a little smaller here um using zoom earth here so i'm hoping to pick up the moon's shadow and track it across with zoom earth it's almost live satellite data there's 8 a.m well it's a that's 20 minutes ago so about a 20 minute lag time we should be able to start tracking the moon's shadow across here and that eclipse is going to go from uh, the south to the northeast in a fashion like that maybe i need to get up my big uh, my big pointer here my big mouse and looking at the weather, it's looking like it might be okay. This cloud cover right here might obscure some of it. I think the eclipse is supposed to go right over Dallas. There's still some cloud cover right over Dallas, so they'll be just clipping the edge of this weather. Let's pack that weather up and see. Yeah, the weather's kind of moving parallel 
to the eclipse and a little bit to the east. So the weather's looking pretty good for this event for much of the route. The eclipse itself is going to be cutting across the continent at 1,500 miles per hour. The dark part of the shadow is only about 115 miles across. And then, of course, there'll be additional shadows all the way across the United States from the eclipse. But the total part and the neat thing is this is going to be a total eclipse where the size of the moon and the size of the sun the distance and all the geometry works out to where it'll just block the sun perfectly for a total eclipse instead of an annular eclipse where the moon is a little bit smaller than the sun and you end up seeing the um, outside ring of the sun so let's go back here okay and yeah there's our 926 november alpha now, where did the other guy go? Don't need that one. Where's 927 and 928? The WB-57 jets. Yesterday, these guys flew across Texas and back out towards uh, El Paso and back, uh, cutting across the uh, flight path of the eclipse. There's several notams out by the FAA regarding flight paths along the eclipse today just warning people to look out they didn't they decided against putting any prohibited airspace up or restricted airspace up now let's go back over here all right we got any questions no northern california we're only going to get uh, uh 25 30 percent maybe uh so we will see we will see a dimmer sun here in northern california Arlington, Texas. Okay, overcast now. Mark says it's overcast. Dang it, over in Dallas. Travis, Michigan. All right, I'm flying out to Fort Drum. <laughs> Liverpool, good. Flying today. You're going to see what it looks like from the air, LW. 40% in Northern California. Good, okay. Uh, East Dallas, about 45 minutes. is already clouding up pretty thick. Darn it. Some breaks in between. That's the importance of why we need the uh, WB-57 jets to get up above all this atmosphere to get a good clear view of that corona. Airspace is looking crowded. Okay, this is the NASA link. 1400 eclipse viewing. 1400 local time in Fort Knox. All right. North Carolina is supposed to get a view, good view. And the Buffalo weather looks like. He's at 50,000 feet, 926 November Alpha is at alt altitude already. See, that's 7 April. Let's see if that'll update and give us uh, 7 April. No, that's, that's old data. 926, 325 knots, 50,000 feet, right. <clears throat> okay, so that's the altitude they want to be at for this flight, 50,000 feet. And if they can clip along at 924 knots and the eclipse is clipping along at 1500 knots, <laughs> it's going to pass them up pretty quick. But they'll be able to remain in totality, these two jets, for about six minutes, where I hear some folks on the ground will have a totality of about f upwards of four minutes, which is pretty impressive for a solar eclipse. And again, the geometry of all this just happens to work out perfectly to make this a total eclipse. And there's some great videos out there that explain how this geometry works. Very historical jets, the WB-57 uh, from um, just post-World War II uh, vintage construction in uh, England. What was it? The uh, English Electric Company and Curtis Martin design. The jets kind of remind me of the U-2. We've got a couple of abandoned Canberra jets right here in Lakeport, Northern California that were used as research jets in the past, um, but are currently no longer on contract and are just sitting uh, at Lakeport, California, right there. There they are. There's the old S2T tracker. There's the two Canberra jets that was used uh, in atmospheric research right next to a Red Sky Dining Room. Uh, at Lakeport, California, which is here in Northern California near Clear Lake. So NASA, let's see, NASA is going to have a bunch of live stuff up later on today. Um, 91 minutes. Uh, and they're going to have a couple of different feeds, a telescope feed here coming on in 91 minutes and uh, some sounding rocket launches in three hours. 
out of Wallops Island, Virginia. So that all might be worth, definitely worth tuning into, especially for those of us that are not <clears throat> in the line of totality. So that's what I wanted to let you know about. Keep an eye on these WB-57s. Hopefully we'll get some amazing um, video back from these guys or, or pictures, specifically infrared pictures of the corona of the sun as they try to figure out more about the science of the sun um, and its impact on us on Earth. And it does impact a aviation sometimes with the space weather is becoming more and more a part of our daily weather briefing. The, the main impact it has on us flying something like a 777 long, long cross-country flights, long like from L.A. to Sydney, is the impact it has on HF or high-frequency radio transmissions. It's a very old-style form of communications, but a very um, reliable form of communications that we still use. It's not our primary source. It's our backup source of communications while we're overseas, and we're skipping the high-frequency signal off of the atmosphere to extend that range long range. And... Um, Solar weather totally impacts that. As the uh, as the, you go through the day, you change the HF. You chase the HF frequency to match the solar conditions at the time. Cloudy in Dayton, Ohio. Sunny here in Montreal. What are the two weird Delta type jets flying north November? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Those are the WB-57 research jets from NASA, the, the uh, early vintage high altitude research jets uh, flying at 50,000 feet carrying uh, this year infrared cameras. Again, they're going to be flying in tandem like this in order to get the same data at the same time to compare the data. Um, and, and take infrared images of the corona of the sun during the total e eclipse. And they'll be able to look deep into the corona of the sun. And this is a unique opportunity that only the eclipse offers uh, them the ability to do. Now, I understand there's some telescopes that kind of simulate this, but um, this will be the most uh, accurate. In 2017, they flew these WB-57 jets in, um, in trail like this in order to extend the totality of the eclipse uh, but this year they're going to be pretty much side by side ham operator yeah you guys know about hf frequencies and uh hf for a cars no a cars is a separate deal usually uses the satellites as i understand it the ap stream is nuts cloudy in richardson texas darn it i think uh metal five five is taking talking about two flights of t-38s that are flying north of the wb-57s okay right so nasa does have a couple of t-38 jets as well and i bet you they're up there working with the wb-47s uh joel had a good question what was joel's question i missed that uh, wait for him south africa clips uh yeah mm. Yeah, it will take some <laughs> solar energy definitely will not work during an eclipse. Hopefully, or fortunately, it's only four minutes long or so. Uh, so in the world is on the AP stream. Ah, huh. Yeah, you've got satellites. You've got a lot of different ways of studying the sun, but the uh, eclipse offers a very unique opportunity. Wow, already for 2026. Uh, audio is broken? Darn it. Yeah, clear here in Grass Valley today. You sh we should be able to see it take a bite out of the sun. Not a cloud in the sky in Perrysburg, Ohio. In the totality. So there's the place to be. Perrysburg, Ohio. We won't see a whole lot. Maybe 40% or so of folks are reporting here in Northern California. Audio is okay. Good. All right. Five by five. Completely overcast here in Minneapolis. Yeah, they 
figured up north there it might be let's take another look at zoom earth see if we got an update on that okay 10 so about every 10 minutes the yep every 10 minutes we're getting a new satellite feed here on zoom earth you can see the movement of the clouds kind of paralleling the the eclipse course but I want to see if we can pick up the shadow of the moon cutting across the earth here on zoom earth all right we'll I'm gonna cut this one off here and we'll come back later on when things are hopping but if you're in the uh, area, just get outside and watch this. This is a, uh, a very unique opportunity to see a total solar eclipse. Thank you so much for your support. We'll see you back here. I got several NTSB updates to get caught up on, particularly the United um, jet that slid off the runway at, of all places, Houston. The NTSB preliminary report is out on that. See you here.